Welcome back into UTEP Miners Dynasty here on College Football 25. Headed into our first home game of the series and coming off a heartbreaking loss to the Nebraska Cornhuskers in Lincoln. What a game that was, but here we're looking for our first win against FCS Midwest. Uh, before we get into anything, we got to name some captains. The first being Maurice Westmoreland as a captain on defense. Big first game against Nebraska. The right guard, Otis Pitts the third, another senior. They will all be seniors. The free safety, Corey Chapman, one of the best players on the team, will be a captain. And also the wide receiver, Jaden Smith, number one wide receiver on the depth chart. So with that said, we did a little upgrading. Um, coming in a couple episodes, we'll be doing a big recruiting show on the bye week in week five be talking about some things been adding some points been manipulating the board few of our highest needs um we're doing well in you'll see a little bit of that here but I just wanted to let you know two episodes from now will be a big recruiting special after the colorado state game uh in week four because we have a bye week in week five it's off to a good start though in recruiting i'll tell you that uh, our top targets were ahead on um, but we will dive into that more because our first visit actually will be in week five so uh, excited about that uh, looking good there we need some help um, you know on, on the defensive side on the offensive side and hopefully we can accomplish that but with that said Drop a like on the video if you're enjoying the series so far. Also, be looking out for some other College Football 25 content I may be working on here coming up. Pretty much every two days here at the start, I'll be dropping an episode of UTEP Minor Dynasty. But on some of those in-between days, we might find some time for some other content. But let's get into it. The first home game of the series, wearing the all-orange uniform here at the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. It's time for Miners football. Let's go. Welcome to the Sun Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. The Miners are here for their first home game of the series and of the season. Also looking for their first win after the heartbreaker last week in Nebraska. Hope you're excited. You know, a pretty good crowd here today. Not totally full. We hope to get that stadium full in seasons to come. The 0-1 UTEP Miners are taking on FCS Midwest. Obviously, a much better roster with the Miners. They need to take a handle of this game and put them away, hopefully, in the first half. But here we are with Buzz Flaviano kicking it off to start the game. A return here. Tackled at around the 20. There is Timmy Timmons in his second game as the head coach, the quarterback for FCS Midwest, DJ Dilworth. DJ Dilworth in the pistol, hands off to his running back, breaks to the left, a nice tackle right there by, I believe, Chapman. They're in the hurry up offense, trying to, you know, uh, overcome some of the deficiencies they may have. He hands off again, a nice cut by the running back going out to the right for about 15 yards there. Still in the hurry up, first and 10 at the 36 on the first drive of the game for DJ Dilworth in these dingoes. Uh, receiver in motion, looking for a pass, looking around, finally finds somebody in the flat, a nice six yard game for him. And off to a hot start here with FCS Midwest uh, here in the hot El Paso, Texas Sun Bowl. Another handoff, nice defensive play by the middle linebacker, Adam Hall. Still in the hurry up offense here on third and six. Can UTEP get him off the field? Hopefully get some rush here, that would be a nice thing. Snap is back in the shotgun. Throws to the left, a good throw, but hits the back of the wide receiver. Now the punt, UTEP causes the punt. Goodman with the return, breaks out to the left. A pretty nice return right here. Gets some good yardage up to almost the 45 yard line where Skyler Locklear and this UTEP Miners offense starts the day. As you can see the impact players right there. And the shotgun to start it. First and 10 at the 43. 
good field position for the first drive of the game. Wide receiver in motion. It's a handoff. No, play action. Skyler Locklear looking for somebody. Puts the ball in perfectly to Amari White. Here on second and eight. Over the middle to Nzinwa. Gets, breaks a tackle. Gets the first down, down to the 24. Quickly moving the ball on this Midwest FCS defense. Here in the pistol, three wide in the pistol. Locklear under control, hands it off to Jackson, tries to get to the outside and cannot. Loss of two. You know, this, uh, this game, not gonna be every single play of this game. We will get all the highlights in, but here we are on second and 12. Throwing aggressively to almost the end zone, incomplete. Now on third and 12, need a big play right here. Throws over the middle, and Zinwa with a nice catch over the middle to get it down to the five. Now Locklear keeps it, tries to get away, breaks the tackle, but is taken down short of the end zone at the four yard line. A little RPO out to Goodman for the touchdown. First throwing touchdown of the year. Trey Goodman, the senior wide receiver, on the screen pass, the RPO. UTEP gets the first touchdown of the day to go up 7-0. Trey Goodman with a nice start to this ball game with a pump return and now a scoring touchdown receiver. Here's starting for FCS Midwest, first and 10 from the 22. A read option, a keeper for Dilworth. He's got some space, a little concerning to start this game. No, they got off the field, but it looks like FCS Midwest is finding some room to move the football. Uh, here on first and 10 at the 38, halfway through the quarter, a handoff, a little more space again, but a nice tackle right there to get it second and six. They're in the hurry up, trying to overcompensate for a little bit lack of a roster. But here, moving the ball to start both of the drives today. Handoff to the running back, gets a few yards, a third and three coming up to UTEP, get them off the field, still in the hurry up right here. Be a nice time for a, a, some pass rush to show up. Another handoff, they get the stop. Punt it back to UTEP, who has the ball, handoff to Jackson, going to the left, tries a spin move, maybe should have broke it out to the, the outside, didn't, but gets a nice six yards on third and four here in the first quarter. Looking for somebody, Locklear finds Goodman again, off to a really good start today. Trey Goodman, the senior wide receiver, off to a very nice start. Here on first and 10, an option play. Last week was a fumble, this week works for 10 yards. Javon Jackson with a 10 yard run. Second and eight from the 34. Locklear looking for somebody, just has to check down for a two yard gain. So a third and eight at the 34. Need a big conversion right here. A throw, a little bit dangerous, is dropped on the outside by a Trish, but that brings in Buzz Flaviano with a 51 yard try. Can he put it through? A big kick from the big man, Buzz Flaviano right there. Love, love the distance. That's a lot of range, 51 yards for the kicker. Did not know he had a leg like that. Thought it'd be a good week to try it uh, here against FCS Midwest. He puts it through perfectly, a 10-0 lead for UTEP. FCS Midwest back with the ball at the 17. Another play, another handoff. Got some room to the outside, the running back for FCS Midwest. Runs for about 14 yards. A little concerning here early on is the amount of yards that FCS Midwest is getting in the run game. If you remember back to the Nebraska game, gave up a lot of yards on the ground as well. Now a nice defensive play right there by Taylor Barracks, the freshman line, linebacker, and also the corner on that side. I could not see who that was. Still in the hurry up. Running some plays as we get close to a minute left in the first. Some more lanes for the running back. About his 20-yard scamper to the 50-yard line. Woo! Little concerning. Still in the hurry up. We need some linebackers to show up. Or some defensive linemen. Something first and 10 from the 50 as we go under one minute. Another handoff. A nice play. Oh, breaks a tackle and then cleaned up by the cornerback. You know, that is one thing 
they've kind of done so far this game is one play they play really well the next play not so well let's see what happens on this play a screen pass looks like there's some confusion from utep on the defensive side but they do cover up well a third and ten as we inch closer to the end of the first quarter here on third and ten signaling out is dilworth a receiver comes in motion it's a screen pass on third and ten he has some room a bad angle by brown turn oh taylor barracks right there it's a fourth and one and FCS Midwest is going in the big play to stop the running back in the backfield. And that ends the first quarter. 10-0 UTEP. FCS Midwest is getting some rush yards, but UTEP Miners are bending and not breaking so far in this game, getting some important plays. Let's head on to the second quarter. Locklear starts off in the shotgun with the receiver in motion. He pitches to him on the jet sweep. Here he goes. Smith outside with a big gain right there. Jaden Smith, the new captain of the team. Another one underneath, right back to Smith, letting him work. A nice spin move, getting another 15 to 18 yards. And now Smith a little shaken up, having to be taken off the field. Jaden Smith, as you can see right here, taken off the field as the UTEP Miners enter the red zone. Locklear quiets down the crowd in five wide. Takes it back, finds somebody over the middle. A nice catch by Amari White right there on first and goal from the nine. Another RPO swings it out to Goodman. His second touchdown of the day. Trey Goodman, two touchdowns so far, making a big impact on this game in the punt return game. Also as a wide receiver. A nice drive right there after getting the ball around midfield. Locklear pumped up. A 17-0 seven, lead to start this game. Utah taking care of business like they should against an FCS team here at home. You love the vibes, and hopefully they can continue it on through the rest of this half and the game. Here on second and five, Dilworth in the shotgun, throws to the outside, misses, throws high. Now a third and five. Utah starting to fill themselves, hopefully being able to get off the field and right back on the offensive side of the ball. Looks like they're bringing pressure here. They are. It's Maurice Westmoreland with the sack after two and a half sacks last week. Gets his first sack of this game. A nice start to the season for the senior captain. Heard that in the crowd, there's some scouts, some NFL scouts looking at this, this freak that showed up at, at the Nebraska game in Lincoln. Puts on the show right there. UTEP getting the ball back. Goodman with another return. Getting to the outside. A nice return here. Can he take it all the way? The angle's closed. Takes it all the way to the 20 where we get a first and 10. Skyler Locklear feeling himself. A handoff to Jackson. Nice little move. There's a fumble. A fumble. Picked up by Nickelberry. What in the world is going on in El Paso? A touchdown. Jackson with an eight-yard run. Fumbles the ball. And Nickelberry, his first touch of the year, I think, Ashton Nickelberry scores on the play. What a wild play here in El Paso as the UTEP Miners go up 24-0. to zero. I'm, I looked through the statistics. I'm not even sure what that counts as as a nice play is made by Chapman right there, the free safety. Here on second and 11, Dilworth with a nice move of the receiver to get a first down. Look. Oh, FCS Midwest has moved the ball a little bit, but UTEP has made the big play when they've had to. Here a handoff, more running room, tons of running room for the running back for a first down on second and eight as we're past the halfway point of the second quarter. Jones gets off the edge trying to get to him, but Dilworth moves out of the pocket and runs for a first down. Dilworth playing a pretty good game so far. Here, keeper, keeper on the read option, a terrible angle by Chapman. Breaks for about a 17-yard run. Now five wide for Dilworth on first and 10 at the 25. Looking for somebody. Going deep. Has him open. A nice catch on the outside by the receiver. And now FCS Midwest at the two-yard line. Quickly answering here with about 250 left in the ball game. Dilworth making some calls. Keeps it himself on the read option and scores 24-7. Nice play by Dilworth right there. A uh, good answer by this offense who has moved the ball, but here we are back after the kickoff. First and 10, a handoff to Jackson, trying to get to the outside. A nice spin move, uh, breaks a tackle, and goes about 14 yards on the run. 
as we get close to the two minute warning. Another handoff to Jackson who fumbled on the last drive, but it's the best fumble of his career. It led to a touchdown, third and three. Locklear looking for somebody, not finding anybody, rolling out and just ends up running out of bounds. They punt it back to FCS Midwest, who now all of a sudden if can do something on this drive, can make this a ball game. Second and seven over the middle for the first down. Timeout called by FCS. Now on first and 10 from the 26th, throwing again, finds another first down. A little concerning, once again, can make it a 10 point game if they can find some, find a touchdown on this drive. Five wide right here on first and 10. Dilworth making the calls, takes the snap, looking for somebody, looking for somebody, rolls out, still looking for somebody, goes on the run, another bad angle by the middle linebacker, Adam Hall, a first down, DJ Dilworth. Will he hit the transfer portal this, this upcoming winter? We don't know. Another great throw right down the middle. Pipes it down the middle. Really good play. Five wide. Hurry up going. Dilworth looks like he's in control, but it is Maurice Westmoreland with the sack at the right time. Look, the UTEP defense has given up some yards, but they're making the right play at the right time. A uh, the second sack of the game, back-to-back -back weeks with two sacks from Maurice Westmoreland, the senior, the captain. A throw right here, put it on the money. Oh my goodness, what a bounce back by DJ Dilworth. A great throw right there, first and goal. They're still hurrying it up, one time out left. On the nine yard line, looking for somebody, throws it to the back of the end zone and it is knocked away by Chapman. Here on second and goal at the nine yard line. Throws it to the corner, looks like a good throw, but is out of bounds. And on third and goal with 11 seconds left, they're probably gonna try to get it to the end zone. Dilworth rolls out, it is picked! It is picked by Harold, the back of safety who plays in the slot. What a play right there to end the half. Really good stuff from the UTEP defense. Even though they've given up some yards, they've come up with big plays at the right time. you love to see it. UTEP will go into the half of 24 to seven. Nice play by Devin Harold, number 17, the sophomore, who will probably be the starter next year, I would guess, after Chapman graduates. But a 24 seven lead here at the half. Miners have played some good offense. The defense has made big plays at the right time. And the best thing that has happened in this first half is that they've taken control of the game. 24 to seven. Hopefully they can find something big here in the second half. What a play that was right there. A fumble that led to a touchdown by Ashton Nickelberry, the junior. Trey Goodman with the first, uh, a big first half. Two touchdowns, two big pump returns. And they love this play so much, they're showing it again. But a 24-7 lead here at the Sun Bowl for your UTEP Miners. Let's get to the third quarter. Here in the shotgun with three wide receivers to the left, it's a play action pass. Locklear looking, going deep, going really deep. Amari White wide open, taking it to the house. 80 yards to start the second half. A big play in UTEP is in complete control of this ball game. They came out of halftime and they did not put the uh, did not put the brakes on. They put the gas on. An 80-yard touchdown by Amari White, Skyler Locklear. Beautiful play, wide open, put it on the money. Amari White took care of the rest and it's now a 31 to 7 ball game. UTEP doing exactly what they should. FCS takes back over from the 26 on second and nine. The tight end is found over the middle. You got to give it to DJ Dilworth today. He has played a really good game. Uh, if they didn't make a couple of mistakes, they might be in this ball game. Another running play here in the second half. It continues the running game. A read option pulled by Dilworth. It is tackled eventually, but after a seven yard game on second and three, Dilworth looking around the sack. Another sack, UTEP coming up with a big play at the right time. Sioni, the defensive tackle. Tonga Wee, or however you say his name, probably should go to the uh, pronunciation. Sioni Tonga Uhai, or whatever his name is, gets his first sack of the season right there at the right time here on third and 10. 
UTEP trying to get off the field again. Five wide receivers. The guy in the middle is completely open. Dilworth, he answers, man. You got to give him credit here on third and seven at the 23-yard line. Dilworth trying to find another answer. Goes over the middle, gets the first down to the receiver. I wasn't kidding. Somebody's got to look for this guy in the transfer portal this offseason. Here on first and goal at the eight. Dilworth keeps it again and runs in for his second touchdown of the game. 31-13. UTEP's still in control of this game, but all of a sudden, Midwest is going for it. Going for two to try to make it a two-score ball game. Hands it off. Dilworth looking around. A sack by Taylor Barrett. Kofi Taylor Barrett, the freshman linebacker, to keep it a three-score ball game here halfway through the third quarter. Really nice play by Kofi Taylor Barracks. I think this kid's got a future here. Makes a good read, a nice tackle. Doesn't count as a real sack, but still a really nice play. Here on third and 10 on the next drive, Locklear looking for somebody, rolling now. We saw the legs last week. Can he get outside? He can for a 20-yard scrambler around there to the 43-yard line. Here on second and six, Locklear bringing a receiver in motion, looking for somebody, find somebody over to Amari White having a big second half now after the 80-yard touchdown. Four catches for 126 on the day. Locklear on first and 10 at the 37. Going back to the speed option. Got some room. Pitches it out to Trish. Trish for the first down. About a 14-yard run down to the 23 on second and six from the 19. Looks like that Locklear is throwing the play action. Going deep. Taking the shot. No. Goodman cannot come up with it. But a third and six here. Five wide for the Miners. Locklear filling himself. Looking for somebody, finds the tight end, hitches over the middle. Made a couple of nice catches last week, shows another nice catch right there on second and goal from the 10 as the clock winds down in the third quarter. A jet pass trying to get to the outside with Jaden Smith, cannot quite get there after the first half injury. He is back into the game, five wide with the clock going down last play of the third quarter Locklear steps up gets it oh makes a play trucks through the three tacklers and scores his second rushing touchdown of the year I believe Skyler Locklear UTEP in firm control of this game going up 38-13 to end the third quarter we'll see if Locklear's day is done but what a third quarter, two nice touchdowns in this third quarter, an 80-yard touchdown pass, and now a scrambling score for Locklear. You know, coming into the season, we talked about a controversy at the quarterback position. Looks like Locklear is taking over. Here in the fourth quarter on second and nine, Dilworth rolls out, finds an open receiver. Another nice throw for DJ Dilworth on second and four from the 46. Dilworth looking around. He's making plays, man. I know it's it's a blowout right now, but Dilworth is still fighting hard. On first and 10 from the 35, eight minutes left in the fourth. A nice throw over to the right side to number 13, 255 yards for DJ Dilworth so far in this game. Third and seven from the nine with 620 left in the ball game. Dilworth brings a receiver in motion, goes out to the right, looking for somebody, throwing it up. A nice play, almost caught by the receiver, but a nice play by the defensive backs of the Miners. No reason not to go for it. Fourth and seven from the nine. Dilworth back in the shotgun, looking for somebody. A tip up in the air, caught. It is caught. Interception. What a play right there by J.C. Hunter, I believe. J.C. Hunter with the tip drill interception. J.C. Hunter, number 13. The senior with his first interception on the season. Two picks for the Miners today in three sacks. McConnell is now into the ball game. Skyler Locklear's uh, day is done. McConnell gets some work as the backup. Quickly out to Trish in the flats. A nice spin move. Trish still playing hard. Has about a 10-yard reception here on first down from the 32. RPO out quickly to Goodman. Goodman with the spin move. Another nice gain. A really nice ball game from Trey Goodman. 438 left in the game. Receiver comes in motion. A handoff to Trish. Trish making a statement. Bus is open. It is a long, long run around 30 yards down to the 22. 
McConnell here on third and five as the clock gets closer to three minutes left in the game. Looking for somebody, looking around, can't find anybody, almost sacked, gets the ball off, and it leaves it to Buzz Flaviano to have his second field goal try of the day that he makes. 41-13, Miners well in control. Now some back out, backups finding their way into the ball game with a minute 45 left on second and seven, almost a pick but it's caught by the receiver. Dilworth goes over 300 yards in this game. Tip of the cap to him. He's played really hard today. He rolls out, looking for somebody, but another sack, the fourth sack of the day. Fourth sack of the day by Devin Gore, the senior defensive end. Look, UTEP has given up some yards. It is a little concerning to me, but look, they've made some big plays when they've needed to. Ben don't break, does work. A minute 11 left, third and 14 for Dilworth. Looking for somebody, rolls out, puts it on the money. A good tackle, it's going to be a fourth down. Fourth down and nine from the 26. The game will be over if he doesn't, com doesn't make this play, but a completed pass. What a catch by Quinn Bayer, the wide receiver over the middle, taking a big hit. 52 seconds left, first and 10 from the 16. Playing for pride at this point for FCS Midwest. Makes a throw, nice catch over the middle. Touchdown, FCS Midwest as they score to get it 41 to 20. Trish, another nice run right here as they're trying to wind the clock. And with that right there, a kneel by McConnell. That will end the ball game. A 41-20 win by the UTEP Miners. Good game from Skyler Locklear. Good game from Trey Goodman. Uh, Maurice Westmerlin, another two-sack game. Two in a row. Player of the game, Skyler Locklear. 237 pass yards. Four TDs overall. Three throwing, one running. 72% completion. Look, this was, a, this was a good ball game. UTEP needed to take control of it early and they did, can be proud about that. Some fireworks, some turnovers, some sacks. And UTEP gets their first win of the series. UTEP with a 41-20 win at home. Had a fun time playing this game. Got to, you know, incorporate some big plays in the offense. Thought the offense worked well. The one concerning part was the yards given up by the defense. They did make big plays, like I said during the game, but going next week against Liberty, they've got a lot better of a roster. It is concerning, especially the run game. Uh, did Had no turnovers today, which is always a nice thing to see. Thought we returned the ball well as well. Um, won the turnover battle, and we won the game 41-20. Uh, to 20. Nice to see Buzz Flaviano, 50-yard field goal. Uh, that That's clutch right there. Uh, Skyler Locklear took control again of the starting quarterback job at, at this point. You know, it's always a fluid situation, but right now you feel really good with him. He does some good things with his legs, does some good things throwing the ball, had a nice day, four touchdowns. You know, Darren Trish is somebody I'm looking at for next week to try to get him more involved. Only had four carries, I believe, against Nebraska, but had eight carries for 67 today. Want to get him involved. Trey Goodman returned the ball well. Also caught the ball well. Uh, Amari White uh, had one catch for 44 against Nebraska and had four for 126. He is averaging a ton of yards per catch. Maybe need to try to incorporate him more. Um, defensively, what I was saying earlier, the concerning thing is the amount of yards and some of the bad angles, um, which has to do with low overalls and the awareness. But, you know, they made big plays when they needed to. You know, two picks. In the red zone, uh, that was big. You know, got some big sacks on third down. Uh, Westmoreland, another two sacks, uh, two interceptions. As I as I said earlier, uh, nice to turn the ball over and get sacks. That that's a good way to do it. So um, it was a fun. The one thing I enjoy about college football 25, I, I think any game can be fun. The gameplay is what makes it. You know, I, I see Goodman on the field with the uh, dreads coming out of the back of his neck. Kind of weird, but I can get past it because the gameplay is fun. So, uh, got some more skill points in this week, and we are moving on to face Liberty next week. In the first game in the conference, it's going to be a tough one, right? FCF, FCS Midwest is not very good. DJ Dilworth was good, but, uh, you know, over here, what I said, I, I'm going to give the start next week to uh, Darren Trish. At running back, um, 
or Darion, or however you say his first name, um, and then move Jackson to the third down running back role. I, I was a little concerned about his fumbles, and, and it just seems like Trish has a little bit more of a burst, even though the ratings would make you think differently. But we're going to give the start to Trish next week against um, Liberty at Liberty in Lynchburg. It's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a very tough game. Also, another reminder, uh, not the next episode against Liberty, but the one against Colorado State. The back half of that episode will be a recruiting like only. We'll have the Colorado State game and the recruiting special all in one game uh, to head into the week five bye. Also, Maurice Westmoreland, back-to-back Conference USA Defensive Players of the Week. Two and a half sacks in the first game, two sacks in this game. He's off to a really big start. Does anybody have a guess of how many sacks he could get this season? Put it in the comments below. Uh, four and a half is a nice start to the season in two games. But looking at Liberty, this is a good roster, man. They got a good quarterback, which is concerning that DJ Dilworth just threw for 300 yards against us in um, – Caden Salter. They also have a really good running back who's a 90 overall. This is not a typical Conference USA team. Once again, in real life, this is a team that some people are saying could find their way into the college football playoff. They'll get killed, but the thing is they have a really good quarterback and a really good running back, and overall a lot better roster than us. So this will be a very tough matchup against Liberty on the road in Lynchburg. They've already played one conference game against our rivals, the, the Battle of I-10 rivals, New Mexico State, where they won 28-14 and won 35-10 against FCSE. So I'm excited to see what this team does. I have some concerns going into the game because of how our defense played, but overall, it's nice to get the first win, even if it's against the FCS uh, Midwest. First win of the series, uh, and now we start conference play in Conference USA against the favorites in the conference, Liberty from Lynchburg, Virginia, Caden Salter, as the quarterback it's going to be a tough one but i appreciate you all so much i hope you're enjoying the series so far i'm going to keep putting these out every two days here to start for um this utep miners dynasty look on the in between days i may pop some other college football 25 content so subscribe to the channel keep the bell on hit the like i appreciate you all so much have a blessed day and i'll see you next time